the patterns that are completing, uh, you know, the fact that the VIX index is at, you know, uh, approaching lows that we haven't had for several years. You know, the whole market is totally complacent. The Bradley model is getting ready to turn down. And I could be wrong here, but uh, this is the kind of trade that if you're right, you know, you're going to make a lot of money. And so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very bearish here. I don't know when the market is finally going to roll over. We need a move of at least 200 points down in the Dow, you know, to get that thing moving. We've already had some movement down, of course, you know, in the transportations and the utilities and the Russell uh, 2000 and stuff. But, you know, the NASDAQ is still uh, more uh, extended uh, on a percentage basis than it was at the highs in 2007 and the highs of 2000 uh, even. I know a lot of that is related to, um, you know, the stock of Apple, but it's not just Apple. You know, there's other things that are, that are going on, uh, you know, at that particular time. I'll also cover, uh, you know, where we are with the uh, natural gas because we, we've broken below that uh, 42 level. We gapped down today, and uh, that sets up some, uh, you know, lower prices down here, and I wanted to cover that, you know, later in the session. But uh, what I would like to uh, start out with today is to show you what happened uh, last night, and actually it was right at the, um, the opening of uh, London. It was when London was really, uh, you know, gearing up. We had several things happening. I'm going to start off, uh, you know, with the gold market. Now, these are... These are shorter term, but these are the things that I'm looking at. And the reason why I have these uh, archived in here is because I happen to have the beeper, you know, my alert go off at that time, and it was telling me uh, at, uh, you know, the real early in the morning this morning that uh, when London was uh, was trading that, you know, gold had made a, you know, beautiful 786 retracement, and, and I was looking to be a buyer down there on that particular retracement. And at the same time that that was occurring, you know, we were we were looking at some other things that uh, were also doing, you know, pretty much the same thing, and that is with the euro. And uh, actually, what I did with the euro is I actually put this one in the uh, newsletter because I assumed that sometime over the weekend that we would be hitting this uh, particular pattern in the euro uh, down at the 131.60 level, and it's rallied uh, a great deal uh, from that level. It's actually rallied well over $600. And it hit the exact tick in both the gold at the 786 and the euro at the exact 618. So what I'm putting the charts in for the crude oil and then also for the apple is I'm just trying to give you an illustration. It's how some of these numbers hit. They don't work all the time. They work more than they fail. That's all I do know for sure. But that's what, uh, you know, what we're really watching. And finally, the, the third one that uh, we were watching that uh, was also a, a perfect retracement and also in the currencies was the British pound. Uh, it also uh, made a beautiful 61% uh, retracement at the uh, 157.8 level, and we've rallied well over 60, you know, pips uh, from that point, which, which is about 400 and some dollars. Now, that, uh, granted, that's not, uh, you know, long-term uh, trading. You know, there's no 200-day uh, moving average or 50-day moving average. This is just swing just swing trading is all it is, and all I'm trying to do is to show the support and resistance that comes in at these spots. And, uh, you know, if I can prove to you over a period of weeks or days or months, whatever it is, that these numbers, you know, work, maybe you'll, you know, do some work yourself and see that this stuff is not really rocket science and that you're able to actually, you know, uh, understand where some of these markets are going just by looking, you know, at the patterns, uh, you know, that we're, that we're really looking at. Now, the, um, the, the there was an interesting you know one of the, one of the fun things about being involved with the TNN family TFNN family is that you know I get emails from people uh, ninety five percent of them are, are pretty good and uh, you know the uh, the other five percent they throw fruit at me but that's okay it's fresh fruit so I, I'm not opposed to that but the, the one of the, the people from the uh, the, the uh, Tiger TV sent me an article uh, that was uh, about David Stockman's interview. Now, David Stockman was a Ph.D. from Michigan who was one of the financial architects during the Reagan administration, and they basically, you know, they asked him the question, where would you put your money? And he basically said, I would put my money in cash. And he went through a little, uh, not a tirade, I guess it was a tirade about, you know, how bad the financial system is, that this is a, uh, Ponzi scheme that the perpetrated by the Federal Reserve, you know, keeping interest rates low, you know, making bonds, you know, extremely, you know, low yielding, 
And so, you know, what you really want to be doing here is issuing bonds, you know, not, you know, uh, you know, borrowing or get, you know, borrow bonds or issue bonds against it. And that, that's why it's really, um, I put part of it in the newsletter, uh, you know, some of the more important things that were in there. But, you know, he basically said that the Fed was, um, you know, you know, pretty much putting a Ponzi scheme. And the reason why I bring this up is I don't really read articles like that, but the person asked me, is this really what you believe in? And it pretty much was right to the, you know, to the point of what I, what I believe in. This is a debt cycle. Uh, we've been in it for uh, 30 years, uh, just borrowing money and borrowing money and borrowing money. Most of this money will never be paid back. That's what history says. And so that's why, you know, uh, you know I, I bring it up to your attention that, you know, someone is, you know, warning you that this is not the time to be, you know, be buying uh, Treasury bonds. I know the yield looks uh, really great at 2.8% uh, or 2.9% compared to, you know, a CD rate that is less than 1%. But remember what Bernard Baruch said, folks, in his autobiography, My Own Story. He said, don't be concerned on the return on your money. Be concerned on the return of your money. In other words, always have your principal you know, covered to make sure you're not going to lose that. And that's the real thing about, uh, you know, about what's happening, you know, with the market. Um, I, I'm going to, uh, we have a break coming up in a few minutes, and I don't want to start my bearish tirade until uh, we, get, uh, we get into the break, but I'm going to show you some charts. Um, some of them uh, are quite interesting, and I especially want to show you the divergence in the NASDAQ with, with some of these other indices that is, ha is at historical levels. I mean, you know, this is just really, uh, really ma amazing. And I, and I know some people say it's different this time. But, folks, I've been looking at charts for um, well, well over 50 years, but I've looked at charts going back several hundred years, and not, nothing ever changes. I mean, really, it never does. I mean, it's just uh, the same thing over and over again. They get overextended to the upside, you know, they get overextended to the downside. You know, that's basically, you know, what we're looking at when we're when we're looking at these charts. And uh, over the past several weeks, you know, I've looked at all these completions that have occurred in the market, uh, and frankly, they are absolutely, uh, you know, it's just horrendous the fact that uh, you know they they look so bad, and yet people think they look so good. And I, I know I'm not trying to. Uh, you know, make it look, uh, you know, any worse than, uh, than it actually is. But it's, it's the same thing in every market uh, across the world. Now, uh, in Tiger TV, I'm going to post the, the chart for the, um, the FTSE, which is, a, you know, one of the major economies of the world, the U.K., and you'll see on the long-term weekly chart on the FTSE that we're making a beautiful bearish Gartley that also happens to be a head and shoulders pattern. It's incredibly symmetrical. Uh, this chart is um, actually from one of my uh, students in uh, Australia, and uh, you know he sent it to me, and I said, "Gee, I did a lot of work on this. It looks so beautiful that I have to to share it with you because it it really does show the technical picture of it. And as long as we don't take out the highs of the last few weeks, it looks like it's ready to move down. Now, all of the other uh, indices uh, on the majors, and we're talking about the Hang Seng, uh, we're talking about um, the uh, German market, we're talking about the Japanese market, they've all done the same thing. They've completed these bearish type Gartley patterns, and uh, we've certainly done that with every index that we have in the United States here. So this is why we're, uh, you know, extremely bearish uh, at this time, and I want to go through it again. If you haven't, um, you know, subscribed to the newsletter, I would suggest you take a look at uh, last week's and this week's, because I've done a lot of work, has tried to you know, to verify where these uh, patterns have done in the past, you know, and where we are now. And, you know, and if, if the Dow goes above 13,500, you know, I'm certainly, it's going to be wrong, and, you know, we'll have to be able to, you know, look at something else. But, frankly, uh, it looks uh, at the present time that we're in a spot where, uh, what we call the sweet spot, that everything's together. I mean, it, it, it either is going to work or it isn't. And, you know, we really are not any farther away than we were on, you know, uh, the end of January. So, you know, for the whole month of February, other than the NASDAQ, the market did actually, actually very little. And the, um, the uh, Russell Index is actually lower than that now. So the small caps, you know, started leading us up, which is part of the January effect. And now that has reversed all of that, and we reversed below the January 
um, you know, the, the late January price. So that's another uh, indication that we're probably getting ready to, uh, you know, turn down in this market. Now, I'm trying to be uh, realistic, and I don't want to be too bearish, but I do believe that I, I, I owe it to you guys to, to, to sh share with you the overall, you know, thing that I look at. And believe me, this VIX index, uh, even though the people, they say it doesn't work or anything, but you just go back and look, and when the market gets too, you know, extended to the downside, you know, something happens to make it, you know, bounce quite a bit. So, uh, I mean, there's everybody is bullish now. I mean, there's there's just a handful of people out there uh, that are bearish, and, uh, you know, that's usually uh, not a very good sign. Uh, also, you know, we've mentioned the uh, advanced declines, that, you know, that has been, uh, you know, deteriorating. The volume has been bad. Now, I'm not predicting the end of the world. I'm just saying we're going to have a pretty good correction from this level, uh, the amount of which I won't know until it actually starts. So we're going to have a little break here to pay a uh, book, uh, pay a few bills. And if you have any questions, it's 877-927-6648. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a better trader each week in his newsletter the gold report with over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week in addition to covering the xau hui gld and dollar the gold report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market for your 30-day free trial to tom o'brien's gold report log on to tfnn.com today don't miss out on this great offer act now You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective and maximize your returns. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The perspective and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Masters with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN.com, author of Mastering Probabilities, a daily investment and trading newsletter, and teacher of the money game. Studies show that three out of five people are afraid for their life in trading these markets, and the number one reason given is fear of loss. Look, fear stands for false evidence appearing real, and the money game proves it. Lesson number one, don't risk more than 1% of your trading capital on any trade. Why, you ask? Because 35 trades in a row where you risk 50 cents and make a dollar are all you need to double your trading capital versus the 230 losing trades in a row you would need to bring your balance to a hundred dollars let me teach you more about the money game risk-free for 30 days go to the home page of tfnn.com and click on my name steve rhodes for your 30-day risk-free trial you are born to be a money master and i'll teach you how X Story Gold Mines, an NYSE Amex listed company trading under the symbol xg is slated to be the newest gold silver producer in argentina X Story is forecast to produce more than 250 million in bullion annually, beginning in 2013, at a cash cost of less than $200 for each ounce of gold produced. That forecast will make X Story one of the highest margin operators in South America and a sector leader in the mining industry. 
X-Story has 50 million in its treasury, having spent over 60 million to date on drilling and engineering. The ultimate size of its Argentina discovery could be determined by year end as results from the six drills operating at the site are fully assessed. To find out more about X-Story Gold Mines and their exciting growth potential, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE Amex under the symbol XG. This segment is brought to you by Great Panther Silver. For more information, just click the Great Panther Silver banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and uh, this is uh, Larry Pesavento, 877-927-6648, and uh, we, we talked at the beginning of the show about the crude oil and also the apple and, uh, you know, just what the patterns are doing, you know, for you folks into Tiger TV, this, you can pull it up and take a look at it, and what we're going to do now is just, uh, you know, review where we are, you know, with the apple. We did hit the 61% retracement uh, exactly at that uh, 539 and a quarter. And uh, we backed off, you know, three or four dollars. But our first price objective on this five-minute chart, you know, which is, you know, intraday swings, would be down around the 531 level. Now, whether that'll reach that in the next half hour or not, you know, I'm not sure. But if we get much above 543, uh, this pattern would certainly, uh, you know, really not be working, and so we would not want to consider it. But the uh, charts that I posted uh, earlier. Uh, during the break was I showed the relationship between the uh, NASDAQ and the transportation index, uh, what the uh, divergence has been. In other words, the NASDAQ, you know, going straight up and the transportations are rolling over. Also, the utilities are also rolling over. Uh, that's another, you know, what I consider a bad sign for, uh, you know, stocks. And so the reason why is that's related to interest rates. And, you know, we want to be able to take a look at, uh, you know, what that's doing, uh, you know, on a longer-term basis, which we do in the bonds, but we frankly want to look at that. I also um, posted the VIX index uh, in the chart going back uh, well over 20 years, and you'll notice that, you know, once we get down into the level where we are now, that's usually been very, very good support. So what I'm saying is that, you know, this is a spot where there's going to be a surprise in here. I don't know where it's going to come from. But it's actually, you know, going to be interesting is whether this is going to be, uh, you know, a main place, you know, for it to uh, to turn uh, or not. We just have to, you know, we'll wait and see. But it tells you the overall complacency of the market is is incredibly bullish. In other words, no one, you know, the, everybody's expecting a slight pullback. They say, but you know, the the market is just um, when it does come, it's not going to be slight. It's if I'm correct. Then it would uh, it would be a lot more than uh, you know what you what you think it's going to be. We've been up for so many weeks in a row that it's certainly overbought, you know, by any stretch of the imagination. But what I'm looking for here is something you know that is really uh, interesting as far as uh, you know a major play that's going to last you know for many months. And the Bradley model is also telling us you know that we're getting ready to turn down any time in between now uh, and the next uh, few weeks here. And then we're down for a long time. In fact, it stays down for actually several years. Um, someone asked a question, you know, uh, about uh, you know the Tiger TV about why I'm showing Apple and how much money is tied up doing that. I'm frankly, I'm not trading Apple. All I'm trying to do is to show the folks uh, in Tiger TV that these numbers work on anything. And all I'm trying to do is to show that the retracements of the Fibonacci numbers and the, the patterns that we look at have validity because I know there's a lot of skeptics uh, still out there and all I'm trying to do is each day that I come on is to give an idea of where you know I think prices uh, are going to go based on this. Now the crude oil I do trade quite a bit but uh, all I'm doing now is to give an idea that these numbers uh, you know work very well. We've done a few other Apple trades along the way but I think by doing something live each morning when I come in on Monday, Wednesdays and Thursdays you know we'll, we'll get a better idea uh, you know when they fail and you know when they work and you know things like that and that's that's what I uh, what what I hope to do and I want to be able to uh, you know continue that and uh, and I know that over a period of time these will work so all we have to do is just be patient and just learn a little bit each day and uh, together you know we can pick up a few things remember that trading is a journey 
you know, it's not a, a destination. So uh, my overall bearishness uh, in the market is, uh, you know, I've, I've been saying about it for a long time. Uh, what I've done this morning is to try to give you uh, a, just an overall view of why it does look so bearish, the overbought situation that we have in the market, the uh, rolling over of the quality, in other words, the number of new highs to new lows, the fact that the VIX index is showing complacency, the number of bulls versus the number of bears, you know, is uh, is very, very uh, bad. And, uh, and, and since we're talking about bulls and bears, we have to talk about gold and silver in the second part of the show. And, you know, that's one of the reasons why, you know, that could also be uh, a problem on, on the bullish side is because of what's happening, you know, with these bearish patterns that we have in the uh, gold bug index and also the... Um, uh, the the uh, XAU gold and silver index, but we'll cover that, you know, after we go to the next break. But right now, what we want to remember is that uh, we are looking at uh, some pretty bearish things, in my opinion. And the Bradley's ready to turn down sometime soon, so now's not the time to be buying. And I've been saying that since January 30th. And if you just kept your money safe, with that, with the exception of buying Apple, you know, you'd, you'd, you'd still be in the game. So let's see what happens. Uh, we're going to take a break here, and then we'll be right back. Hi, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. If you want to get great trade setups in equity as well as the option market, come over to TFNN.com and test drive my daily newsletter, Market Insights, for two weeks absolutely free. Each trade setup comes with a profit projection as well as stock placement. Included in Market Insights is a Twitter alert service. This allows you to take advantage of intraday setups. Volatility is back in the markets. What does that mean to you? To me, it spells short-term opportunity each and every day. The days of trending up on light of volume are gone. We have come off the highs with volume across the globe. Don't get caught in the complacency trap. Many of the indices have given back two months of trading in one week. We have a trader's market. You can take advantage of this trader's market by test driving my daily newsletter, Market Insights, free for two weeks. Market Insights will give you the edge you're looking for in the markets. Go to TFNN.com under Newsletter. Hit the Market Insight tab for your two-week free test drive right here, right now. In the world of financial markets, there's a new player in town with an exciting new way to trade the markets. Nadex now offers binary options as well as bull spreads in a wide range of indices along with commodity and forex markets. With as little as $100, you can gain access to a new way to trade global financial markets while guaranteeing that your risk will always be capped. Nadex allows you to multiply your trading opportunities in ways never imagined before and access markets you once thought were out of reach. With short-term trading opportunities available, including binary options expiring each hour the market is open, Nadex allows you to take advantage of a variety of market conditions regardless of volatility or market direction. Now is the time to take advantage of this exciting new market. Don't let this trading opportunity pass you by. Open your account today by clicking on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Nadex, a better way to trade. Put the power of the Chapman Wave methodology to work for you. No matter what market you trade, what time frame you trade in, or your trading style, the opening call, Basil Chapman's daily market newsletter, is bursting with the information and trades you need to become a more successful trader. I've been using Basil Chapman's Chapman Wave methodology for several years now. His Chapman Wave can be used for any time period for not only equities, but futures, currencies, commodities. I've been also a subscriber of his opening call, which I find an invaluable tool to help me analyze the potential of the market each day. He gives you opportunities to go short and long. It includes recommendations on stocks. I strongly recommend people using the Chapman Wave and very, very strongly support the use of his opening call. To find out more about Basil Chapman and his Chapman Wave methodology, and to get your two-week free trial of the opening call, a $64 value, visit TFNN.com today. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? 
No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Smith Barney. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportion of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley Smith Barney believes that a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Smith Barney financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and certified financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Smith Barney, LLC. Member SIPC. This segment is brought to you by Crocodile Gold. For more information, just click the Crocodile Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, and uh, we have a caller from uh, Colorado, I believe. Um, actually, New Jersey, I'm sorry. Dan, are you there? Yes, sir, I am. Good speaking to you. Good. What can I do for you? Well, I was uh, interested in what your take on natural gas was at the time. It broke below, you know, in previous lows, of, you know, within the past two weeks. And uh, I just wanted to your take on Okay, uh, I will be happy to do that. In fact, I had several emails over the weekend about uh, the UNG, which is a natural gas um, ETF, I guess. And, uh, you know, it was very close to breaking it, and today it gapped down along with natural gas. Um, for the, those of you that go into the Tiger TV, I posted the, posted the long-term weekly chart on the natural gas showing the large AB equals CD pattern that is there. And now um, we have also gone down in, in the daily pattern. I'm going to take the time frame down. And we are, again, uh, right near the uh, 786 level in this uh, 235 level. But frankly, with the gap down that we've had today, Dan, it looks like uh, you know we want to... Uh, you know, actually go a little bit lower. In fact, uh, if you um, if you trade the uh, the oil and gas um, ETF, the UNG, there's a beautiful uh, you know Gartley and butterfly. It's actually butterfly pattern uh, forming down here within the next point or two. And if you get a chance, you know, to go into uh, Tiger TV, you'll see that the range is uh, um, it's trading at 1878 right now, and the target for this would be. Uh, in the 1835 to 1710 level. So it's about 10% uh, more to the downside on this particular uh, ETF. So um, it, it doesn't look like the uh, 236 level is going to hold in the natural gas be, uh, on the futures just because of the gap down today. And, and someone mentioned that there was some type of, uh, that Obama had some, said something about taking away uh, natural gas uh, tax incentives, but I don't know anything about that. Uh, all I know is that prices are lower, and, uh, you know, the price objectives that we're looking at uh, look like they're going to be, uh, you know, considerably uh, lower in the uh, UNG than where they are now. Now, the natural gas is a totally different thing. I still think that's got a chance to hold this uh, two, 236, 230 level, uh, and then we'll, we'll have to, uh, you know, see what happens uh, from that point. Okay, so if I trade off uh, of the uh, actual natural gas, at 2:36, if it breaks, then I am in the UNG. Uh, I'll just uh, go ahead. Okay. And well, if, if you're in the UNG, what I would do is, if it makes a new low today by more than about 10 or 15 cents, I wouldn't risk anymore because with the gap down, those targets are going to be pretty close to being hit, and that's a long way away. It's better to take a you know a small loss at that point. The fact that they gap down uh, Friday was, uh, or excuse me, today was not a big surprise because they closed so badly on Friday. Right. And uh, you know, and now we'll just have to wait and see, you know, if it uh, if it's going to hold that level. So, would you think an intraday stop of like eighteen fifty should be okay? Well, that's twenty. Uh, it's twenty eight cents from where it is now, so I'd say that's more than enough. Uh, you okay. know, I'm I'm sort of bearish stock, so I think that these other things might be pulled down by it too, and uh, that's the you know the main question that we that we have to uh, consider. I think is it, you know, once it starts, it sort of you know it sort of builds up. Very good. Thank you, sir. Okay, thanks for calling in, Dan. I appreciate the call. 
uh, we'll, we'll, we'll follow this natural gas uh, like we've been doing all along. And uh, the support that we had at that 245 broke last Friday. And so the fact that, you know, it gapped down today is not uh, a big surprise, but I still think we're, we're relatively close to a spot where we should come to a bottom of this 21-year uh, bear market. Remember, this is the same type of pattern that we had with the uh, Japanese yen uh, when it was down around that, uh, you know, 73 level. And, uh, you know, now we've rallied all the way up to the 81 level. And uh, we have a potential for this one to really go with that Japanese yen if it really, if it really moves. So we just have to, uh, you know, wait and see what the next thing is, is going to be. Now, um, we have completed a, um, a bullish Gartley in the uh, Treasury bonds, uh, you know, based on that, you know, the, they, they roll over the, uh, the um, contract months from March to June, and the June is actually showing a really nice um, uh, bullish Gartley pattern. And if we can, you know, stay above that uh, 140 level in the, the June Treasury bonds, I still think we have a chance for another, you know, move up into that uh, new high ground, which would uh, get the long-term rates down to about 2.6% in the 30-year bond. And, uh, you know, I don't know anybody that wants to loan money to, to the government or anybody else at 2.6% for 30 years because that's a long time. All you have to do go is to go back and look at that long-term 30-year chart that I've posted uh, in Tiger uh, TV many, many times, and it shows you the, the tremendous uh, swings we've had in interest rates, even though they've been on the... Uh, downswing, interest rates going lower for 30 years. The swings in between have been, you know, uh, on the magnitude of you know 15 to 20 thousand dollars easily uh, in these particular uh, uh, instruments. And so they they're nothing more than another asset class, like gold, silver, or or anything else. So that's the the real uh, thing to keep in mind. Now I really I, re I think we really need to take a look at the. Uh, the uh, gold and silver uh, markets, because the, the fact that we've had um, uh, a tremendous, uh, you know, divergence in the um, stock, um, excuse me, the uh, gold and silver index versus the actual, um, uh, what, what, um, the actual metal itself, and we've been talking about this uh, in the newsletter uh, for quite some time, and we've had the, you know, three lower lows now. Uh, and we've had um, the Gartley pattern has uh, uh, formed uh, three times at these lower highs, excuse me, it's three lower highs, not three lower lows, three lower highs since uh, September, and each one of those has been a, you know, a bearish Gartley pattern, and this one has started down, you know, really badly also. So it looks to me like the gold and silver have probably topped and, uh, you know, the, the silver uh, last uh, Thursday when we were on the air hit the exact 618 retracement within a nickel at 37.25, uh, I believe, per ounce. And, it, you know, broke over, you know, 10% 10, uh, 10 in a matter of a short period of time. And gold was down over $100, you know, during that time. So that's, that's another reason why I'm, I'm beginning to get more and more bearish, you know, on the, uh, on the gold and the silver. And so this is why we're, we're looking at that, um, the same thing. And then if we take another look and, we, and if we look at the gold bug index, which is a way of looking at the, uh, you know, how many bullish people are, or how many people are bullish, you know, the gold and the silver. And the gold bug, gold bug index has, has been actually incredibly bearish for a very long time, even more so than the gold and silver index. Uh, the, the steepness of the line is even farther to the downside than it is with the gold and silver index. So when you add this all together, it, it, you know, it gives you an idea that these things are headed down. And then if you, if you add to what I was saying about the stock market with the overall market of what it's doing, you're going to get a pretty good idea that you know, if these things start to roll over, there's going to be an asset class, um, you know, uh, a flight from an asset class. In other words, the exact opposite of a flight to quality is people are going to want to go to cash just to protect their cash. Now, the only way that's going to happen is if we get some type of, uh, of deflationary environment that comes into play. Now, the probably the only way that that is going to come into play is if the if the Fed has made a really bad mistake, and that's what Stockman uh, David Stockman was saying in his article that he believed that they've become a patsy 
and uh, that Bernanke has made a mistake by, you know, inflating everything. In fact, uh, you know, if it hadn't been for him inflating, I'm, I'm afraid where, uh, you know, Citigroup and uh, some of these other banks uh, like Bank of America, you know, where they would have actually uh, gone to because it is really uh, amazing, uh, you know, that, that you know, they're down 90% from their, from their high values. And so that's, that's usually not a good sign when you look at your banking uh, facilities when you, where you're supposed to be in a big bull market. So I, it's really hard to be uh, bullish at this level, so you just got to keep in mind that, uh, you know, this is where we are. And uh, whether I'm right or not, I don't know. I know I feel like I'm ranting or raving around here, and I don't want to do that because uh, you get, you, 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 I don't want to be known as a perennial bear. But the last few weeks, uh, the more and more I look at it, the more and more bearish I become. And I go back and look at history uh, at other times when these things occurred. And what I try to do is make the, uh, I go back and look at the charts and I watch the divergence of what was happening with the NASDAQ in some of these areas. And, you know, you know that it really gives you a pretty good idea. I realize the NASDAQ really didn't start trading until 72. So the only times you can really look at it were the bottoms in 1982, the top in 87, the bottom in uh, 93, and uh, the top in 2000, the bottom in 03, and, um, you know, where we are now, the 08, the 07 high, and then where we are now. So that's really what, uh, you know, what we're, what we're watching. So as um, I have a, uh, someone asked me a question about corn. You know, I've, I've been saying uh, for quite a while that in corn and beans that, you know, they, these look like they wanted to go higher, and uh, I will try to take a look at corn. Uh, a little later, I know I do that on Thursdays for sure on the uh, on the commodity on the commodity exchange. But since someone had an interest in corn this morning, we're going to take a quick look at corn because uh, the rest of the markets have been getting banged around a little bit, and uh, you know corn has held up uh, you know quite well and has broken above this uh, breakout line that that we uh, talked about after the Gartley was made uh, down around the 620 level. We've now moved you know, well over uh, $2,000 uh, per contract from where the uh, market actually was at that particular point. So uh, corn looks to me like we are headed up to, you know, well above uh, the $7 level without too much, uh, without too much uh, problem. Uh, you know, this is another, you know, pattern. It, this pattern, as a matter of fact, this, this, this these corn pattern is very similar to the five-minute pattern that we're looking at with Apple and the five-minute pattern that we're looking at with the crude oil. It's an ABCD pattern with retracements. This one happens to be to the 786. It's now breaking out uh, to the upside. Uh, we've talked about this breakout uh, above 640 uh, quite a few times on the commodity show, and, you know, we're now we're trading, you know, well over $1,000 a, a bushel you know, above that level, and when you stop and think that, uh, you know, corn, uh, that gold and silver uh, ha have been uh, hit pretty hard as uh, uh, platinum and also copper, you know, the, uh, the actual growing commodities have not experienced that. So that tells you that they're on a different cycle and they still, uh, you know, are heading to the upside. So uh, the corn market looks like it's going to go quite a bit higher. If you, if you just did a simple... Uh, you know, AB equals CD measurement that, that we're looking at, uh, you'll see that it takes us uh, very near, you know, the, the $7 uh, level, and uh, that's why we're, uh, you know, we're saying that we should make that level without any, uh, without any trouble at all. And if you have a chance to go into Tiger TV, I will be happy to, uh, you can take a look at it, and uh, it'll see that it's, uh, you know, getting very, very close uh, to that. Now, the big news in the commodity market, since someone mentioned commodity, is the fact that India banned uh, copper, uh, copper, <laughs> cotton ex exports today. And uh, cotton was up the limit, four cents. Uh, I do not trade cotton, but, uh, you know, this is what we're, uh, this is what we're looking at. Uh, the, the news was that uh, they had some problems with their um, a crop, and so they're banning all exports. And so what we're going to do is to see what happens. I don't trade cotton. The only story I can tell you about cotton is when I was a little shaver, about three years old, and my grandma had me in my, my high chair teaching me about how to use stops in the commodity market, she said to me, son, she said, if you ever have the urge to trade cotton, go lay down in your crib until the urge goes away. And I have not traded it since that time. So 
I stay away from it. There's too many other things to trade that are a lot more fun, and uh, believe me, uh, it, it's just really a lot, a uh, lot easier to trade. I do trade sugar once in a while, but uh, as far as the the cotton, uh, that's not uh, it doesn't have an interest uh, interest for me uh, at all. So these are some of the things that we're looking at now. Uh, we want to take a uh, a quick look at the uh, the overall um, um, the bond market. Oh, well, excuse me, I've already covered the bond market. I want to get I want to get to the. Um, oh, hold on just a second. If I can pull it up here, I wanted you to see the S and P uh, on the on the monthly cash basis because we have come up to this level uh, several times and uh, we are uh, at that level again and uh, it hit the 786 level uh, which was the low of the um, August 15, 2007 that's another reason you know for uh, you know my overall bearishness uh, we never went above that other than for one day and so I'm uh, I'm beginning to believe that you know this bearishness that we're looking at because of the Bradley model uh, you know, makes us think that we are in a very, very bearish uh, environment. So just be real careful uh, at this point, if if nothing else. That's the the main thing of uh, you know what we're trying to accomplish when we uh, go through here. So um, I, you know, I I really had a lot of trepidation about this show today because I didn't want to scare people, and I hope I'm not because you know I'm wrong quite a bit. But once in a while, I'm right. But uh, just just keep in mind, if we get a really bad day in the Dow, down more than a couple hundred points, that's going to trigger uh, that the uh, this thing is right, and, and I am correct. So we'll wait and see. Could be off by another week or so, but, you know, we'll have to wait. So we've got a break coming up in here, and then we will uh, get back, um, you know, to the markets, and I want to uh, go over a little bit of the foreign markets again. 877. At Tiger Metal Exchange, we pay you more for converting your jewelry to cash. Let's go to uh, Brian in New Jersey. Hey, Brian, what's going on? Hey, Tom, I uh, just want to let you know I did uh, give you some jewelry. Uh, my jeweler offered me uh, about $650. but you get a check in the mail tomorrow for about 1200 At Tiger Metal Exchange, it's all about honesty when converting your jewelry to cash. Okay, let's go to Paul in Florida first. Hey, Paul, what's going on? Well, I want to commend you on the Tiger Metal Exchange. I just did a deal with you guys the other day. Oh, good. I'm very happy. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. Now, yeah. did you sell us jewelry or did you buy coins off us? Yeah, I sold you jewelry. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. See, what we weighed of that was less than you guys said, so, you know, you're totally honest. At Tiger Metal Exchange, we give you the tools to value your gold, and it's absolutely free. Call 866-618-8888 or log on to TigerMetalExchange.com. We've created the easiest, safest, and most honest cash for gold process. Tiger Metal Exchange. It's the only call you need to make. TFNN is proud to bring you the cutting edge of investment newsletters. Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Ken is a top-down investor who lets price and volume in the major stock indices tell him when to be at the market and when to be out. By using his unique blend of fundamental and technical analysis, Ken will protect your hard-earned capital while realizing breakout gains. Go to TFNN.com today, click Investment Newsletters, and get Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks free for two weeks. Would you like to discover the next great tech stock? David White, TFNN's technology guru, has just launched his new newsletter, The Technology Insider. In his newsletter, David will be looking for those shining stars that may turn into the next Apple, Microsoft, or Cisco. David combines his technology background as a software programmer with his market skills as a successful professional trader to give you this unique newsletter. We're on the verge of the next great tech run. With the Technology Insider, you'll be in front of the run-up and not lagging behind. David is developing a long-term investment portfolio. Therefore, we're only offering the Technology Insider as an annual subscription with a remarkable price of only $395. That's right. For a little over $1 a day, you'll receive the fundamental technology wisdom and technical trading skills of the Technology Insider, David White. What are you waiting for? Go to the front of TFNN.com, click on the link on the front page, sign up for your two-week free trial, and become a Technology Insider today. 
here's what people are saying about Tiger TV. Let's go to John in Tampa. Hey, John, what's going on? Hi, Tom. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. You having a good day out there? A wonderful day. I love your Tiger TV. I watch it every day. I'm like a kid in a candy store. Oh, man, I appreciate you out there watching it. How long have you been watching the Tiger TV? I watch it almost a month now, and it's just it's wonderful. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Oh, yes, yeah, it's cool. You see the charts and everything. Thanks so much for the hard work. Tiger TV, a great news service from TFNN.com. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and uh, I would like for you, if, if you get a chance, to go into uh, Tiger TV and take a look at the uh, um, the chart that I posted on the hourly chart of the uh, New York Stock Exchange Index, which is the broadest index that we uh, that we have uh, that we look at, and that number that we had at 82.16 uh, uh, was an exact 786 of the whole range of the whole year. Uh, you know, going back to how we made a year ago, July. And so, uh, you know, even though the Nasdaq went nuts and the Dow went up and took out that high. You know, the S&P did not do it. It made a double top. Um, the, Na the New York Stock Exchange Index made the exact 786. And re the reason why I think it's important, and this is my opinion, is this is exactly what happened, you know, with the, uh, with the silver. When it hit 37.25, you know, that was the exact 61% uh, of, the, of the previous 61% uh, uh, ratio. Uh, gold uh, went above it by just a few dollars and broke $100. So these numbers mean a lot to me uh, geometrically. And so it's telling me that this thing is actually, uh, you know, uh, looking to, that it wants to go to the downside. Now, uh, someone in the Tiger um, uh, TV asked a question about cattle because on Thursday show we were showing the uh, chart of cattle, uh, you know, that the fact that it was making a major top up there at that, uh, you know, 131 level. And uh, it was, uh, you know, very, very close uh, to what we thought was a high, and it's down quite a bit. Uh, today that doesn't mean anything. It just means that it just started down, you know, on the, uh, you know, from from a, from a pattern. That's all it is. It doesn't mean any difference whether it's, uh, you know, going to turn up or not. It just it started the right way. Whether it's going to be uh, continuing or not, you know, we really don't know. So we'll just have to wait and see. Um, I want to. I've only got a few more minutes here, but I, I do want to, to, you know, thank you for listening to my uh, getting up on my soapbox about being bearish. Um, I, you know, this is what I, you know, what I do for a living. So when I'm right, I'll, I'll make a few bucks. When I'm wrong, you know, I frankly have to, uh, you know, uh, eat a little crow, and I do that uh, quite a bit. But you eat enough garlic with it, it's not too bad. Um, the um, right now, the um, um, the apple is still in, you know, doing very little. Uh, you know, it's in the, the trading range of, uh, you know, from that last Fibonacci level to the next one, but. I, you know, I think we're going to get down to this, uh, you know, uh, at least the uh, 531 and a half level, you know, intraday. And the only reason I'm doing that is to show you, you know, what's happening. Now, we've also talked about crude oil, and crude oil is making a, you know, a retracement pattern right now off of the other one that we looked at when we first started, we, we first started the show. And I'm going to put it into Tiger TV so you'll see that these numbers, it, in fact, it just made it. And in other words, this is... This is what I would think would be a low-risk buy in crude oil because it's now at a, 
a 61% retracement off the last move that we just had, and you don't have to risk, uh, you know, an arm or leg on this particular one. But uh, you know, this is just a sequence of these Fibonacci numbers that are nothing more than numbers of the, you know, the, the uh, sacred numbers of sacred geometry. And so, um, you know, this is what we, this is what we're really trying to do, and we'll uh, take a look how it, how it ends up. But um, we are uh, just about out of time here. I wanted uh, one other person asked me a question about what happens when these markets gap, uh, like you know what happened with the UNG uh, today. You know when the news announcements and things like that come out, there's really nothing you can do about it, folks. Uh, it's just one of those things that you know it's part of, of trading, it's part of risk that what we have uh, you know to put up with, and uh, that's the reason why you know you, you, sometimes they work in your favor and gap the right way and other times you know they don't the odds are that they're going to gap in your favor but sometimes they don't actually uh, you know work in your favor so that makes it a little more uh, difficult now um, I believe we're ending up the show so I'll be back on the show uh, tomorrow uh, excuse me on Wednesday and uh, we will talk to you folks a little bit later and I hope my bearishness uh, doesn't uh, you know hurt you but I hope